let's check these out. So we have one burrito and one taco is five dollars and two burritos and five tacos. I don't know why I put C for tacos, but that was exciting. Is equal to thirteen dollars. And I need to eliminate something. So I am going to multiply three by negative two. Those cancel. I'm left with three T is equal to three, so T is equal to one dollar. So the dollar is I'm sorry, the taco is a dollar. So if the taco is a dollar, then that, that means the burritos must be four dollars. Let's try another one. Maybe this will be harder. All right, taking a boyfriend on a date. Each hour is $17. Each hour at the arcade is $12. And if we spend $3 on their date, I mean, three hours on their date, so we have the arcade plus the bowling alley is three. And we have $17 for the alley and $12 for the bowling. No, no, I did that wrong, didn't I? We have the arcade and the bowling alley. So the alley, the bowling alley is 17, and the arcade, my bad, is that. And that is equal to $42.25. How many minutes at each? So we need to multiply through by a negative 12. And what is that, negative 36? So those cancel, you're left with 5B is equal to $42.25 minus 36, so $6.25, and so we divide that by 5, and we have 1 hour, 1.25 hours at the bowling alley, which means we have 1.75 hours for the arcade. All right, check, check. Let's try 15. So we have two numbers with the following properties. We have a, we're going to call it the first and the second. So the second number is three more than the first. Did you catch that? Second number is three more than the first. The product of the two numbers is nine more than their sum. Which of the following represents the possible values of these two numbers? So we've got a lot going on here. Um, ultimately, we just want to see kind of what even makes any sort of sense. So the one of them is only three more than the other. Do you notice that these guys here, um, there's nine in there? In between them so that's definitely out here there's actually four plus one five in between those here is three in between and here is also three in between so at this point here with this kind of messy little fraction uh, whatever going on here what I would do is just kind of eliminate some things since it is multiple choice and start putting some things in so this is definitely fitting for both of those and now what we want to do is note that their product so the product here is four is equal to 9 plus their sum, and the sum here is negative 5, so that works. Here, their product is positive 18, and that's equal to 9 plus their sum, which is negative 9, and this one does not work. So this is our magic little button of goofiness. All right, so we have one more inequality to do here, number 16. So let's see, a car requires four seats and six cup holders. So a car, we've got a car which requires four seats and six cup holders. Wow, maybe if I just did S for seats, that would work better. Seats and cup holders. And we have a truck requires two seats and four cup holders. The factory curtain currently has 120 seats and 220 cup holders. So we have 120 seats we need a situation for. And we need a situation for 220 cup holders. So what we have really here is that a car is four seats and a truck is two seats. 
And for the cup holders, we have that a car, oh my gosh, oh yeah, that we have a car is um, two uh, cup holders, six cup holders, six cup holders, and a truck is four cup holders. So here are kind of our two little equations that we have going on here. And so these are the two inequalities for the company's constraints. We have four cars plus two trucks is equal to 120 seats. And then we have six cars plus four trucks is equal to 220 cup holders. Okay.